Okay, so we're gonna do our first activity together. We are beyond interested in the proportion of red beads in this giant plastic container. Beyond interested. Uh, we wanna know the parameter, i.e. the true proportion of red beads in the container. All right, we don't have time to count out every single bead. We have places to be, other numbers to crunch. What are we gonna do? How do we get an estimate for our proportion, which we call a statistic? Well, we're gonna take a sample of beads from the container and calculate the sample's proportion of red beads. So let's take a look at this, okay? So I, nobody wants to count out those red beads. I did it, or not even just the red beads, all of the beads in that container. I did it once, I'm the one that has the true parameter in here. So what we're going to do, because we lack time and money, and you can imagine if we were doing this in class, I, we just don't have time to count all of those beads. So I went ahead and I got my little Dixie cup, all right? And you're just gonna watch me count out my, my sample proportion. So I'm just gonna find the proportion of red beads here and use that as a guess for our proportion of red beads everywhere in the container. So give me a moment, here we go. A lost one. Okay, so if I keep track, I have, I'm gonna write it up here, 17 red beads. And then I had, one, two, three, that's where it came from, okay. Okay, so I had 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, eight. 78 other beads. Okay, so let me get my beads out of the way, taking notes on what I have. Okay, so we're back at it. So here we go, I had 17 red beads and 78 other beads. So if I wanna get the proportion of red beads, it's gonna be a ratio, okay? And in the top, this is gonna be, the numerator will be the number of red beads. And the denominator, you'll hear this phrase later, it's always your total sample size. So here I'm just gonna write total number of beads. So let's see what our numbers are looking like here. So out of my Dixie cup, right? Out of my Dixie cup, there were 17 red beads in here. So my numerator will be 17, okay? Now, in terms of the total number of beads, I need to add these two numbers together. So let me go to my trusty calculator here, and we will do 17. Let me clear that out. So we'll do oops, 17 plus 78. So we've got 95 red beads in total. So if I wanna look at my sample proportion, I'm gonna do 17 divided by 95 and find out that's about 17.9%. Okay, so now that I've run my little activity, let's answer a couple of questions about this, um, this number we've gotten. Is this proportion, this 17.9%, or if you wanted to, you could write it as point. 179. Is this proportion a statistic or a parameter? And this number here is a statistic. All right, this came from a sample of red beads, not the entire container. So this is a statistic. Okay. And you can imagine, let's say we were in class and I asked every student seated 
to get a sample of red beads. So they each came up and got their own little Dixie cup, or you can even mimic it at your house if you have M&Ms or Skittles or something like that. You can imagine that if you took repeated Dixie cup after Dixie cup and repeatedly crunched sample proportion after sample proportion, you would not get the same proportion each time. So when I ask, will everybody get the same proportion? The answer is no. Oh, and here, let me fill this in. This would have been the word statistic. Okay. And that idea, that idea that if you take repeated samples and you crunch the numbers each time, you will get different numbers each time also. Maybe you'll have a repeat, but it's likely you won't have an exact repeat. It's, it's unlikely that I won't get another sample proportion with exactly 95 beads of which exactly 17 are red. And that, that concept is called sampling variability. All right. Now, if I scooch down a bit, or I should say scooch up, the next set of questions say, is this sample proportion 100% accurate? And what I'm asking here is this was based, this number was based off of our little Dixie cup. Imagine you did have enough time and money to count every single red bead in that giant container against every bead in that container, make that parameter, that ratio. Do you think that ratio, if you counted all of the beads, would be exactly 17.9%? And the answer is probably not. Okay, could it be close? Sure. My statistic here, 17.9%, let's say that's about 18%, just so I can talk about it a little bit more easily. So 18% is in here, or at least in my sample proportion, right? 18% coming from the Dixie cup. So what I imagine is if I really did count every single red bead and every single bead in that giant container, I think my parameter will be somewhere around 18%, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. Like I could see it being at 20%, right? I might be a little underestimated, right? Or maybe the true proportion of red beads is down at 16%. I could see just some wiggle room there, but based on my sample proportion, since I got 18% here, I don't think if I counted every single bead in the entire container. I don't think I'd get a 90% proportion that way because 90% is so far away from 18%. But numbers close to 18%, I could see that. So in terms of could it be close, sure. It's possible. It depends on how we selected our sample. You're going to hear the phrase random sample a whole bunch in this class. So if we have a nice representative random sample, it's possible this number should be, or could be close. And I want to just preview where we're going to go with this. So in stats, we're very aware that when we uh, get numbers from a sample, when we get these statistics, that they're a little bit off, all right, or at least the potential to be a little bit off. So what we do is we give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room on either side. And you may have heard the phrase before, margin of error. Right, you might hear this poll is correct with a 4% margin of error. It's a very common phrase uh, out in the real world and we use it all the time in stats. So for right now, we're gonna come back to margin of error and how you actually crunch that number in chapter eight. But for right now, let's just pretend I had a 3% margin of error. All right, and I'm just gonna put a little note here. I made this number up. All right, this is coming in chapter eight, okay? And we're obviously not at chapter eight yet, but let's just fake it and say I had a 3% margin of error. And I want you to see what, what statisticians would report if they got a statistic of 18% with a 3% margin of error. So when we get to chapter eight, when we figure out how we crunch, if this is really 3% or 2% or 10%, when we do all of that, that formula, that'll be great, but let's just pretend we had an 18% statistic and we had a 3% margin of error. So what we do in stats is we give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. And again, wiggle room is the non-formal term. If you want to sound like a statistician, we'll say margin of error. So I'm saying I think I'm within 3% of the, of the real number, of the parameter. 
So I actually think the true proportion of red beads, oops, it's not how you spell red, red beads in the container, I think it's between, and let's go with the, the lowest I think it could be. I think the parameter the lowest would be would be 18 minus 3. So I do 18 minus 3, that would be 15%. Right? So the lowest proportion I think that would be in that giant container is 15%. And then we also add our margin of error to our statistic, and we get 18 plus 3, which is, what, 21%. And a lot of times we write it up in a little interval. So we'll say, I think the true proportion is somewhere between 15% and 21%. And you could have written those in decimals, no problem there. But that's, that's a fancier term called a confidence interval. And again, this is all coming in Chapter 8. Okay, but I just want you to rem hear these ideas. Maybe it'll, you'll remember it when we get to chapter eight. You're gonna wanna keep track of these numbers. We're gonna use them again in chapter eight. But that's your first look at a confidence interval. So in stats, we do this all the time. Instead of running the census, we take a sample. From that sample, we get a statistic. We know through sampling variability that this is not likely to be exact and accurate. So we give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. And that wiggle room is called a margin of error. We subtract our margin of error from our statistic, add it, to our statistic to get something called a confidence interval. Okay. All right. So let's finish up this page. All right. So why do we take samples? We take samples because it, it's less money to go after a sample than a population, and it's less time. So it saves time and money. And, and sometimes it's inappropriate um, to run a census. So let's say I wanted to get the safety rating, the crash test safety rating for Toyota Corollas. And when they try and get your safety ratings, they take these cars and they run them into a wall and measure all sorts of things. So why would I only want to take a sample of Toyota Corollas and not the population of Toyota Corollas? Imagine if you ran a census. That means you would take every single Corolla, run it into a wall, and get all of those metrics. What's the point of going through all of those cars? You don't need to go through all of those cars. So it takes time, takes money, and then when you get to the end, there are no more Corollas left to sell. So that would be a ridiculous way, or a ridiculous time to actually run a census. So saves time and money. It's a little bit more appropriate uh, in some cases. And then we just give ourselves some wiggle room. That's how we make up for that. And ideally we want our samples to represent our populations. We want our sample to look like our population in every aspect that we deem important, whether that be gender or age or weight or height, whatever it is, we just want it to look like our population, but on a smaller scale.